Good day my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Brace yourselves for an urgent and chilling revelation, France, a nation renowned for its grandeur and cultural prowess, is now crumbling under the weight of catastrophic floods. Paris, the illustrious city of lights, is submerged in an unprecedented deluge, turning boulevards into rivers and landmarks into waterlogged relics. This is no ordinary storm, it is a divine warning, a harrowing manifestation of God's wrath upon a world steeped in sin. Paris, the city of light, now shrouded in a forbidding darkness, has been gripped by apocalyptic fury. As the world eagerly anticipated the splendor and camaraderie of the Olympics, a sinister tempest bore down upon the city. Torrential rains, relentless and unyielding, turned the elegant boulevards into treacherous rivers. The Seine, swollen and enraged, threatened to burst its banks, casting an eerie, forbidding shadow over the Eiffel Tower. And as if nature itself sought to deliver a final unrelenting blow, a tornado, an unusual and terrifying phenomenon for this region, ripped through the heart of Paris, leaving devastation in its wake. The tempest struck with a vengeance, an unfathomable fury that spared no quarter. The rain fell in relentless sheets, a deluge that's for believers, the timing and ferocity of this calamity stirred profound and unsettling questions. Was this a mere act of nature, or was there a deeper, more spiritual significance to the devastation? As the waters surged and the tornado raged, many turned their eyes to the heavens, seeking answers in the divine. In the book of Matthew, Jesus prophesied that in the last days there would be signs in the heavens and on the earth, famines, earthquakes, and pestilences. Could it be that this catastrophic storm was a manifestation of divine displeasure, a harbinger of the end times foretold in scripture? The world watched in horror as images of the flooding and tornadoes in Paris were broadcast globally. The city, a symbol of human achievement and cultural heritage, seemed now to be a stage upon which a divine drama was being played out. Believers from around the world saw in these events a stark reminder of the fragility of the storm, with its deafening winds and torrential rains, seemed to echo the prophetic warnings of Scripture, urging repentance and faith in the saving grace of Jesus Christ. The Bible speaks of a time when the Lord will return, a day of judgment and redemption. For many, the Paris storm was a stark reminder of the proximity of that day. In the aftermath, as the waters recede and the full extent of the damage becomes clear, the world stands at a crossroads. The physical rebuilding of Paris will undoubtedly be a monumental task, but the spiritual implications are even more significant. Will humanity heed this warning? Will this disaster prompt a global turning towards God, a recognition of our collective need for His mercy and guidance? As believers reflect on the events in Paris, there is a profound sense of both sorrow and hope, sorrow for the lives lost, the homes destroyed, and the suffering endured, but hope, too, for in every trial and tribulation lies an opportunity for spiritual renewal. The Bible assures us, for believers, this disaster is a powerful call to return to those foundations, to seek God with renewed fervor, and to proclaim His message of love, mercy, and salvation to a world in desperate need. The question of whether this was God's punishment is not one that can be easily answered, but it is one that prompts deep reflection. It is a call to examine our lives, to consider our relationship with the Creator, and to respond to His call with humility and faith. The storm, with all its terror and destruction, may indeed be a divine invitation to seek shelter, not just from the physical elements, but from the spiritual storms that threaten our souls. In the midst of the chaos and confusion lies a profound opportunity for transformation and redemption. Humanity stands at the precipice of a monumental and cataclysmic era, a great tribulation, as forewarned in the Holy Scriptures. This period, ominously foretold, 
is the inevitable consequence of the rampant sin and unrestrained wickedness that have pervaded our world. In the book of Nahum, the prophet delivers a sobering message of God's fury. The Lord is a jealous and avenging God. The Lord takes vengeance and is filled with wrath. The Lord takes vengeance on his foes and vents his wrath against his enemies. These words, stark and unyielding, paint a picture of a God who is not only just but also fiercely protective of his holiness. The concept of divine jealousy here is not one of petty envy but rather a profound and righteous indignation against those who spurn his love and defile his commandments. The book of Jeremiah echoes this theme with chilling clarity, see, the storm of the Lord will burst out in wrath, a whirlwind swirling down on the heads of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord will not turn back until he fully accomplishes the purposes of his heart. The imagery of a divine storm, a whirlwind of righteous fury, underscores the unstoppable nature of God's judgment. It is a tempest that will sweep away the unrepentant, leaving no refuge for those who rejected his call for righteousness. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul warns of the impending wrath in his letter to the Romans, but because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will repay. The earth will be ravaged by plagues, famines, wars, and natural disasters, each event a manifestation of God's righteous anger against a world steeped in sin. Believers witnessing these unfolding events will recognize them as the fulfillment of ancient prophecies. The book of Daniel speaks of a time of unprecedented distress. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. Jesus himself, in the Olivet Discourse, warned of a great tribulation, a time of suffering so severe that if those days had not been cut short, no one would survive, but for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. These prophetic words serve as both a warning and a beacon of hope for the faithful, assuring them that God's ultimate purpose is not destruction, but redemption. The intensity of God's wrath is further emphasized in the book of Zephaniah, the great day of the Lord is near, near and coming quickly. The cry on the day of the Lord is bitter, the mighty warrior shouts his battle cry. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of trouble and ruin, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. The language here is visceral and evocative, capturing the sheer terror and overwhelming dread that will accompany this period of divine judgment. The imagery of darkness and gloom, distress and anguish conveys a world plunged into chaos, where the normal order of things is upended by the relentless advance of God's retributive justice. Yet amidst the foreboding predictions and dire warnings, the Bible also offers a message of hope and redemption. The prophet Isaiah, while acknowledging the reality of God's anger, points to the promise of salvation, Come, my people, and the great tribulation, as prophesied in the Bible, is not merely a period of arbitrary suffering, but a divinely ordained process of purification and judgment. It is a manifestation of God's unwavering commitment to justice and his relentless opposition to sin. The prophetic language, anger, storm, jealousy, serves to underscore the seriousness of this period and the necessity for humanity to heed the warnings given. As the prophet Joel declares, the day of the Lord is great, it is dreadful. Who can endure it? Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. This call to repentance is as urgent now as it was in ancient times, offering a path to redemption amidst the looming shadows of divine judgment. In this era of unprecedented moral decline and spiritual apathy, the message of the Great Tribulation resonates with a renewed urgency. 
As humanity approaches this pivotal moment in history, the warnings of the Bible serve as a clarion call to repentance and faith. The Great Tribulation, with its terrifying imagery and stark depictions of divine wrath, underscores the seriousness of sin and the imperative of turning back to God. It is a time of reckoning but also a time of hope, pointing to the ultimate victory of God's righteousness and the fulfillment of His redemptive plan. In the face of such monumental events, believers are reminded of the unshakable promise of God's love and the assurance of His eternal kingdom. In these times of rampant moral decay and unrelenting chaos, the only beacon of hope that stands resolute is the belief in Jesus Christ, the Savior and Redeemer of humanity. The Bible speaks with unmistakable clarity and solemn urgency that faith in Jesus is the singular path to avoiding the cataclysmic wrath of God and the terrifying ordeal of the Great Tribulation. This belief is not merely a religious sentiment but an existential necessity, providing immediate salvation and an unshakable guarantee of eternal communion with God. The magnitude of this truth is underscored in John 14 verse 6, where Jesus himself declares, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. These words, spoken with divine authority, encapsulate the exclusive and definitive nature of salvation through Christ. In a world teetering on the brink of divine judgment, this declaration is a clarion call to humanity, urging all to embrace the path of redemption that Jesus offers. The Apostle Paul, in his epistle to the Romans, expounds on this profound truth, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here, the stark contrast between the consequences of sin and the promise of salvation is laid bare. Sin, with its corrosive and damning effects, leads inevitably to death and separation from God. However, through Jesus, the gift of eternal life is bestowed freely upon all who believe. This gift is not earned by human effort or merit. The Bible vividly describes the horrors of the Great Tribulation, a time of unprecedented suffering and divine wrath poured out upon a rebellious world. In the book of Revelation, the apocalyptic visions of the Apostle John detail the severity of this period. Then I saw the Lamb open one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come. I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. This imagery, both awe-inspiring and terrifying, signals the commencement of divine retribution, a series of catastrophic events that will engulf the earth. For believers, however, there is a profound assurance that they will be spared from this wrath. In 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9, Paul offers a comforting promise, for God did not appoint us to suffer wrath but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. This verse reassures the faithful that through their belief in Jesus, they are destined not for destruction, but for deliverance. The certainty of this promise provides an anchor for the soul, a steadfast hope that remains unshaken even in the face of impending doom. The immediacy of salvation through Jesus is a recurring theme in the New Testament. In Acts 16 verse 31, Paul and Silas proclaim, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. This statement underscores the accessibility and simplicity of salvation. It is not a distant future promise but an immediate reality for those who place their faith in Christ. This instant salvation is a testament to the power and efficacy of Jesus' sacrificial death and resurrection, which broke the chains of sin and opened the way to eternal life. Believing in Jesus also secures an eternal relationship with God, an unbreakable bond that transcends the temporal trials and tribulations of this world. In John 10 verses 28 to 29, Jesus assures his followers, I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, 
no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. This promise of eternal security is a profound source of comfort and strength for believers. It affirms that their salvation is safeguarded by the omnipotent hand of God, impervious to any external threats or forces. The guarantee of eternal life with God is further elaborated in the book of Revelation, where the Apostle John describes the ultimate destiny of the redeemed, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look! God's dwelling place is now among the people, and He will dwell with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. This vision of the new heaven and new earth is a breathtaking portrayal of the eternal bliss that awaits those who believe in Jesus. It is a realm where the sorrows and sufferings of this present world are utterly obliterated, replaced by the radiant glory of God's everlasting presence. The seriousness of these events, the wrath of God and the great tribulation, cannot be overstated. The Bible employs strong, evocative language to convey the gravity of divine judgment and the urgent need for repentance. The prophets of old, such as Isaiah and Jeremiah, spoke of God's anger and jealousy, warning of the dire consequences of forsaking His ways. In Isaiah 13 verse 9, the prophet declares, See, the day of the Lord is coming, a cruel day, with wrath and fierce anger, to make the land desolate and destroy the sinners within it. These warnings serve as a sobering reminder of the reality of God's judgment, a judgment that is both righteous and inevitable. In the New Testament, Jesus himself issues stern warnings about the coming. This prophecy underscores the unparalleled nature of the tribulation and the dire need for salvation. The path to avoiding this dreadful fate is unequivocally through faith in Jesus. In John 3 verse 36, the Apostle writes, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. This verse encapsulates the dichotomy of human destiny, eternal life through belief in Jesus, or enduring God's wrath through rejection of Him. The choice is stark, and the consequences are eternal. Believers, therefore, are called to a life of unwavering faith and steadfast hope. Their belief in Jesus not only secures their immediate salvation but also empowers them to live victoriously amidst the trials of this world. In Romans 8 verse 1, Paul proclaims, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. This declaration of freedom from condemnation is a powerful affirmation of the transformative impact of faith in Jesus. However, for those who have rejected Jesus Christ, the rapture signifies a missed opportunity, a finality that seals their fate outside of God's grace. The concept of dying before Jesus' second coming carries significant theological implications. The Bible teaches that physical death is not the end of existence but the transition into the afterlife. Hebrews 9 verse 27 states, just as people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment. For those who die without having accepted Jesus Christ, the period of grace ends at their death. Their chance to receive eternal life is forfeited, and they face the certainty of judgment. This underscores the urgency of the gospel message, the imperative to accept Jesus Christ while the opportunity remains. Conversely, for those who die in Christ, their eternal destiny is secured, they will rise at the rapture, their bodies resurrected and glorified to meet the Lord in the air. This assurance is a cornerstone of Christian hope, a promise that transcends the temporal and offers a glimpse of the eternal. The Apostle Paul, in his first letter to the Corinthians, offers a vivid description of this transformation, Listen, I tell you a mystery. 
we will not all sleep, but we will all be changed, in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. This promise of resurrection and transformation is a profound source of comfort and hope for believers. The end of the period of grace and the onset of the 70th week also highlight the fulfillment of God's prophetic timeline. The prophetic clock, so to speak, will resume its countdown to the end times. The events of the tribulation, as detailed in the book of Revelation, will unfold with startling precision, culminating in the return of Jesus Christ as King and Judge. Revelation 19 verses 11 to 16 portrays this triumphant return, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice, he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter, he treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. If you enjoyed this video please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next videos goodbye.